Clearly you're a smart consumer. Not only are you looking at going solar, but you're also trying to figure out what the best options are on the market and what the best options are for you specifically. There are so many options on the market today, it can get really confusing really fast. So before we talk about what panels were chosen for this video, I wanna talk a little bit about what our selection criteria was first. So one of the biggest factors was the panels had to be available in the United States, either manufactured in the United States or able to be imported into the United States. It was also important for us to take a look at residential grade solar panels and not commercial solar panels. Amongst all the panels, customer satisfaction had to be high. The warranty has to be some of the best, if not the best available. Same with performance, it either has to be the best or close to it. And the companies have to have excellent ratings over the years. In my opinion, it's very important to go with a reputable company and one that's been around for a long time because you not only want to maximize your investment, but you want to have that peace of mind that that company is going to be around for the long haul. This is important because you don't want to have out-of-pocket expenses or have to come up with a completely new solar system in the future if the company that you decide to go with happens to not be in business. So typically solar manufacturers have different levels of performance, different levels of quality, those kinds of things. You can think of it as Ford versus Lincoln or Chevy versus Cadillac. And we're going to be looking at the premium lines in each of these categories. And out of those lines, we're gonna be looking at the panels that produce the most amount of energy. So we're gonna be looking at panels that have the highest wattage value. So that way we can maximize the amount of energy our home solar systems can produce. Now for the panels themselves, we're gonna take a look at five different areas. The first one will be their efficiency rating. The next is the temperature coefficient. And I know that sounds a little confusing, but I will explain what that is here in just a second. Next will be whether or not they offer a comprehensive solution. And again, I'll explain what that means here. The fourth thing is cost. And then the fifth will be warranties. And yes, I did say warranties because typically on a solar panel and even on a solar solution, there are multiple warranties in play and not all warranties are created equal. So first up, let's talk about the Silfab SIL-430BG+. So this is a 430 watt panel. And at the time of this recording, this is the highest wattage panel that this company produces. Now, if you haven't heard of Silfab before, they've been around since 2010. They have manufacturing facilities in the United States and Canada. And the reason why this panel makes the list is because this has the longest warranty out of all the panels we're gonna look at in this video. Now with the panel specifications, efficiency is arguably one of the most important factors to take a look at. This is going to tell you how efficient the panel is at converting sunlight into energy. So what you wanna see here is you wanna see as high a number as possible, and the higher the number, the more efficient the panel is gonna be. Now this is gonna be really important if you don't have a lot of room on your roof. So by having a denser panel, you're gonna be able to get more energy production out of the same size roof as you would if you went with a panel that has a lower efficiency rating. So for the Silfab panel, the efficiency rating is 21.4%. The temperature coefficient is 0.377%. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain what that is here at the next panel. The panel warranties are 25 year production warranty and a 30 year performance warranty. As far as price is concerned, Silfab is gonna be right in the middle of all of these panels when it comes to the price per watt rating. And we'll talk a little bit more about the actual costs when we get to the end of the video. Up next is a panel from a company called REC, which stands for Renewable Energy Corporation. Now, if you haven't heard of REC before, they've been around since 1996 and they're based out of Norway. REC is a well-known brand within the solar industry and they're not only known for making quality panels, but they're also known for being innovative as well. The main reason why this panel made the list is because of its wattage rating. So this comes in at 470 watts, and yes, this is a residential panel. And you can see here that it's 40 watts higher than the Silfab. In fact, it's gonna be about 40 watts higher than all of the panels that we're gonna be looking at. Its efficiency rating is 22.6%, which is slightly higher than the Silfab, and its temperature coefficient is 0.24%, which is significantly better than the Silfab panel. Now let's talk a little bit about what that temperature coefficient is because it sounds a little bit confusing, but it actually isn't. So with the temperature coefficient, this is simply a way to understand how efficient a solar panel is at converting the sunlight into energy as the solar panel gets hotter. So believe it or not, solar panels actually lose their ability and some efficiency in being able to convert the solar energy from sunlight into electricity as the temperature of the panels rise. Now this sounds a little bit confusing at first, but if you think about it, um, these are electronics. So as electronics get hot, typically they don't perform as well. If you think about your laptop computer or maybe even your iPhone, like for example with me, if I leave my iPhone out in the direct sunlight, I'll sometimes see a notice on it that says that I can't use it for a little bit, it has to cool down because it got overheated. So that's kind of the same thing that's in play here with these solar panels. So the thing that we need to really look at with the temperature coefficient is what is the number and how close is this number to zero? So if the number were zero, which no panel is, then that would mean that it took no type of a performance hit whatsoever 
uh, as the temperature got hotter outside. Now, this is going to be a more important factor if you live in an area that's hot all the time. So say if you live in the southwest or, you know, in Arizona or someplace that's really hot most of the time, this is going to be a more important factor than it would be for someone, say, that lives in the Midwest or maybe uh, in the Northeast in the United States because those areas are more seasonal and they're not hot all the time. So they're not going to take as much of a hit uh, consistently across the year. As far as cost is concerned for the REC panel, it's going to be closer to the upper end of the range compared to all the other panels that we're looking at. Next up, let's take a look at the Tesla T430S. So this is a 430 watt panel. So again, not quite as high as the REC panel that we just looked at, but it is still up there in terms of total wattage performance compared to all other residential lines. And while Tesla makes good panels, they're not necessarily outstanding. So the main reason that these are on the list is because of the popularity of the Tesla brand and how often people tend to reference Tesla when it comes to home solar. So with Tesla, they got into the solar business in 2016 when they acquired a company known as Solar City. And before that, Solar City had been in business since 2006. So as you can see here with the T430S panels, they're rated at 19.8% efficiency, which is the lowest out of all of these. They have a 0.331 temperature coefficient, which is similar to the SoFab panels, but they're not as good as the REC panels. The product warranty and the performance warranty in terms of years is the same at 25, but when it comes to the end of the warranty, the guaranteed percentage of performance is at 85%, which is the lowest out of all of these. The other thing I want to point out is the labor warranty is only at 10 years. So I think this is a good place to jump in and talk about the different types of warranty that you can see on a panel and what you should be aware of. So the first one is pretty straightforward. It's the manufacturer's warranty. So that just simply states that if there are any manufacturer's defects in the panels uh, for that duration of time, typically it's 25 years with a solar panel, that those are covered under warranty. The other type of warranty you need to be aware of is the performance warranty. So this is a way that manufacturers can guarantee the panels will continue to produce a certain amount of energy over its lifespan. Now this number, the, the amount of years that the warranty is in place, correlates typically to the end performance percentage that you should expect out of the panel. So basically that means, for example, with the Tesla panels, they have a 25 year performance warranty and their end performance percentage is 85%. So that means at the end of 25 years, you should still expect the panels to produce 85% of the energy that they're rated to produce. Now, there's also a scale that's typically involved as to how much energy production they can lose every year and still fall under warranty. So if you have any kind of a performance issue with the amount of energy these panels are producing, the performance warranty is the thing that's going to come into play and be able to help you get those panels replaced if there's any kind of an issue with that. Last but not least is the labor warranty. And so basically that covers uh, the labor of replacing a uh, part that's under warranty. So if you have any kind of an issue, say for example, with one of your panels that someone needs to come out and actually take the old panel off the roof and put the new panel on the roof, the labor warranty is going to cover the labor expenses that are involved with that. With Tesla, you need to be aware that they offer a 25 year manufacturer's warranty as well as a 25 year performance warranty but their labor warranty only lasts for the first 10 years. So while it is nice to have that labor warranty, it would be a little bit better to see a labor warranty that covers the entire warranty period for those panels. Now, when it comes to cost, the Tesla panels are going to be on the lower end out of all the five panels that we're looking at in this video. Next up, we're looking at a panel from a really well-known electronics company, Panasonic. This is the Panasonic EV PV 430 HK2, which is a 430 watt panel. Panasonic makes quality panels, but the main reason why they're on this list is because they are the oldest company. They've been around for over 100 years. Now, they haven't been in the solar business for over 100 years, obviously, but they have been in the solar business since the 1970s, which is saying something. When it comes to the efficiency rating, the Panasonic is at 22.2%. The temperature coefficient is at 0.24%, so this is right on par with the REC panel that we took a look at. The product warranty, the labor warranty, and the performance warranties are all at 25 years. The warranty in performance percentage is at 92%, which again is the highest that we've seen. And like Tesla, Panasonic also offers a comprehensive solution. And when I talk about a comprehensive solution, I'm looking at whether or not these companies produce more than just the solar panels themselves. So there are a lot of solar manufacturers that just produce the solar panels. And there are some companies that produce solar panels in addition to other components, like battery banks for your home, for example. Also, some solar panel manufacturers don't have a certified network of installers or don't take care of the solar installations themselves. And I think that's a really important distinction to make because you want to make sure when you're making this type of an investment in your home that you're not only getting a quality product, but you're also getting a quality installation as well. As far as price is concerned, Panasonic is going to be at the upper end of the spectrum when it comes to costs. And last but certainly not least is the SunPower M-Series 
440 watt panel. The reason why SunPower made this list is because, in my opinion, they have the best overall solution when it comes to residential solar. So as far as SunPower, the company is concerned, they've been in business since 1985 and they're located in San Jose, California. Uh, typically, SunPower sets the pace when it comes to solar panel innovation and manufacturing. So a lot of the other solar panel companies have to catch up to SunPower's innovation. So SunPower is one of the top brands and they've been around for quite some time. In fact, SunPower is one of the few manufacturers that have been around longer than their warranty period. So that says a lot. Now, while this panel doesn't have the highest wattage rating compared to the REC panel, it still is higher than the other panels that we're looking at in this video. As far as the efficiency rating, it's at 22.8%, which is the highest out of all these panels. The temperature coefficient is at 0.29%, which is right in the middle between all these panels that we've looked at. The warranty period is 25 years across the board, which is similar to other panels that we've looked at. The warranty in performance rating is 92%. Again, this is the highest that we've seen. And SunPower does offer a comprehensive solution. As far as costs are concerned for the SunPower panels, they are going to be on the upper end, but at the same time, they are considered a premium solution and their specifications back that up. Now, I realize I've been a little bit vague when it comes to costs throughout this entire video, and that's really been intentional. And the reason for that is because there are a lot of different factors that can be involved when selecting a home solar system that's right for you and your home. Everything from the size of your roof to the orientation of your house, where your house is located in the country, and other factors like what rebates or government incentives are available. All these things play a factor and a role into understanding what your total cost of ownership is going to be for any solar system. So like any other investment in your home, I highly recommend going out and getting at least one or two bids, if not more, to understand what your options are and what the total cost is going to be. So once you have a bid or multiple bids, what you can do is you can take that total price, that total price on the estimate, and divide that by the number of watts that your system is rated for. This is going to give you a per watt price that you can use to compare apples to apples against other bids so you can make an informed decision. Now, personally, I like to go with the best option that I can. SunPower does make it really easy to get an online quote. So with SunPower, you can go to their online estimator. They can pull up a satellite image of your house, create a virtual diagram, and lay out different solar panels on your roof so you can see and understand exactly what it would look like and cost to own a SunPower system. So if you haven't gotten a quote from SunPower yet, I'll leave a link in the description below that you can use to go to their website and request a free quote. So as a final recap, here's the comparison slide of all the different panels that we've looked at in this video. Really though, all these panels are great, so no matter what panel you decide to go with, I don't think you can go wrong. That's it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.